the Zoyo ASI 071 MC Pro Cool dedicated one-shot color astronomy imaging camera is not only a really long and winded mouthful to say, but it's a bit of a handful to hold. Now this camera is, as mentioned, a color dedicated astronomy camera featuring cooling, very sensitive 1.5 times APS-C color sensor, and some other bits. And in this video, I'm gonna be talking about my user experience and reviewing this camera. So let's get going. A camera lives and dies by its sensor, so let's not waste any time there and dive straight into that. As mentioned, it's a color sensor. And when you compare it against the full frame equivalent of 35 millimeters, it comes out of being a 1.5 times crop factor APS-C sensor. Now what this actually means in real terms for us when we're doing astrophotography is, out of all the cameras barring a full frame, it will give you the widest field of view for that specific telescope. And that could be advantageous if that's what you're after. The physical sensor size of the O71MC Pro works out about 23.6 millimeters by 15.6 millimeters in dimensions, and the pixels are 4.72 microns. Now when you work this out, this gives this camera 16 megapixels. The bear pattern is RGGB, which also would lend itself to explaining why the green channel is so sensitive when you look at the transmission charts published by Zwo. Judging by the efficiency charts, they say over 50% efficiency. But when you look at it, the blue channel is about 80% efficient, green channel is just under 100% efficient, and the red channel is about 90% efficient, which is really good to know because reds is where all the hydrogen alpha data is in emission targets, and blues also is obviously where the nice deep colors for reflection nebulas are. The sensor window, however, on the O71 is only anti-reflection AR coatings. It doesn't have UV IR cutting on it. So if you want to use it no filter and capture natural star colors without a light pollution filter, you're gonna get bloat. So you're gonna end up having to use something like a UV IR cut filter in the imaging train, or of course use a light pollution filter or a narrowband filter to just filter out those edges of UV IR. The full well depth of the O71 is a respectable 46,000 electrons. However, at Unity Game, which is 90 for this camera, the wells are about 16 to 17,000. Now this is still a pretty high number, especially when you compare it to other cameras like the 183 sensor. Now this information is from the charts published by Zwo, but I did go off and do a sensor analysis in SharpCap for this camera and I found the results to be comparable. Of course, every sensor is gonna be slightly different here and there, but the margins were close enough to say the charts are accurate. Now, when we go from zero to 90 gain with the O71MC Pro, we're losing about 66% of our full well depth. Of course, there are other things to take into account like read noise, dynamic range, and things like that, but just focusing on full well. 66% seems to be around the normal. It's a lot of things, it's a, a two thirds is a lot to lose, but when you compare it against other cameras like the 533, which lost 70%, it's about, it seems to be the average loss. However, one thing that this camera has, or rather hasn't got, is high gain conversion, HCG. What this basically does is when you put the gain up to a certain point, it kind of knocks it up to second gear and gives you a uh, dynamic range back and more wells and things like that. So the O71 doesn't have this. So as you crank your gain up, you just lose dynamic range, you lose depth of wells, and you also lose read noise. Now we wanna lose read noise, but we wanna keep compensate for the dynamic range. DR, however, usually can be compensated for via stacking and editing. So it's not that much to worry about. And finally, on paper and in my own use of this camera, I've not really seen any other reason to not use Unity Gain. A lot of people image there, and a lot of people have a lot of success imaging at Unity. The sensor is 14-bit ADC, which actually gives you an enormous scope for shades of gray. This is, what a, this is one thing that ADC does. It gives you more bits and more shades of gray, which gives you smoother images. Now in practice, this means when you're shooting things like flat frames, you want to aim for an ADU target of about 8,000. Unless you're using programs to stretch it to 16-bit like Astrophotography Tool and the ASI Air Pro, in which case you want to aim for an ADU of about 30,000. As for calibration wise, I use dark frames to calibrate the noise current out of this camera, but I don't need to use dark frames to calibrate out amplifier glow. What amplifier glow is, it's like a big starburst that can be seen across a frame or lighter areas in the corner of the frame. And darks help calibrate this out, but because the O71 doesn't have it, guess what? it's better to not have it to have to fix it. So let's look at a 10 minute dark frame from 
an ASI 183 mono camera. Now it might be mono, but the test is still valid because Amplify Glow is to do with sensor circuitry. Can you see this large starburst coming across the frame? That's Amp Glow. Now let's cut to a 10 minute dark frame from the O71. Can you see it's not there now? Here's a five minute dark frame. Here's a 10 minute one that we've already seen. 30 minutes. So yeah, absolutely no sensor glow coming from this. Lovely. In terms of cooling, like most cooled astronomy cameras, it has a two-stage Peltier coating on it, which means it can get to about 35 to 40 degrees Celsius below the ambient temperature. So what we'll do in practice is you look at what your temperature is, say it's 10 degrees Celsius outside, you can cool down to minus 30 degrees, about minus 30 degrees. If you want to go that far, that's up to you. But we're, when we're looking at the charts published from Zoe to do with the dark current, we see that diminishing returns is at about minus five degrees to minus 10 degrees. What this means is that you really don't need to force chilling any more than that. And if you want to learn more about camera cooling versus exposure lengths and things like that, I have a talk from Dr. Glover who wrote SharpCap, who goes into more details about this. He's much smarter than me who can tell you more about it. The link to that can be found in the card and the video description down below. Now I would normally shoot at minus 15 degrees Celsius. When I had the 533MC Pro I did that. When I had the 183MC Pro I did that. With the OS71MC Pro I don't do that. I shoot at minus 5 degrees. As already established, I don't see any point pushing it any cooler than that. But also another more major reason. I was cooling down to minus 15 degrees one night and I actually started noticing a checker mark pattern over my sub exposures. And I asked some questions and it turned out that the sensor window was condensing over, it condensation, it was frosting, it was during what, it was condensing, okay, it wasn't that bad. It was condensation forming on the chamber window. So I don't know how that was getting there because the O71 does have a heated window on it, but, and that was switched on, but it wasn't working. So I ended up swapping to minus five degrees because frankly, having to warm the sensor up and then cool slower, it wasn't for me. Apparently you can get around it by cooling really slowly, but I ain't got time for that. Now with all that said, what were the pictures like? I found the pictures coming through this camera to be very satisfactory. I've taken, a f I've taken several images with this camera now. A few of them I'd call complete. I mean, we never really complete projects, do we? But some of the images I've took, the Heart Nebula in Narrowband, Andromeda, the Pleiades, they've all come out to be really, really nice. The individual subs had a great signal to noise ratio. The Heart Nebula could be cleaner for five hours worth of data, but do remember, I was using a dual narrowband filter with a color camera, and that always kind of adds a bit more noise. You always need to add more integration time if you're doing that. Let's punch in here to some raw frames. I find them relatively clear with the Andromeda Galaxy, quite a nice clean image, rather noise free, and the rest is cleaned up with darks and a bit of noise reduction in post-processing. The Heart Nebula is also relatively clean, but as I already mentioned, it would be a bit noisier because of the narrowband filter in use. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I was using the um, Skywatcher Evastar ATED, and because of the APS-C size sensor, I had a really large field of view compared to the instrument, and that's what let me get almost the entire Heart Nebula in one frame, and the entire Andromeda Galaxy in one frame. So let's talk about suitability now. So what I mean by suitability is to get a nice, well-sampled image under normal seeing conditions with the O71MC Pro. What focal lengths give you that well-sampling? And the O71 with its 4.72 micron pixels suits nicely for 500 millimeters to 1470 millimeters of focal length. Again, remember that field of view you're going to be getting because of the APS-C size sensor. Now let's look at some examples of what these field of views can be. At 500 millimeters, you can squeeze in the Andromeda Galaxy M31 quite comfortably, as I've demonstrated in my picture shown earlier. You could also fit the entire Flaming Star Nebula in there. At 750 millimeters, you could get the entire Eastern Veil Nebula in with room to spare, and you could also fill the frame with the glory of the Orion Nebula. Up to 1000 millimeters and you can get a lovely framing of the Christmas tree cluster or the Cone Nebula and you could also get some really nice framing on the Wizard Nebula. At 1400 millimeters and you can just about squeeze an M81, M82 in the frame. M101 also could be quite impressive to look at 
and the Bubble Nebula would be enjoyable. The O71MC Pro features an internal USB hub of two USB 2 ports. It connects to the computer using a USB 3 type B connector on it and of course we have the power port in which is a DC 12 volt sensitive positive connector. Pretty standard in this scene at this price tag with cool astronomy cameras. However as is always the way of this way they don't feature a power plug in the box. They don't give you a plug or an adapter. And when you're paying this much for a camera, give us a plug. I will not get over this. Speaking of price, at the time of this review, the O71MC Pro comes in at a rather substantial £1,438. I ain't gonna sugarcoat it, that's a lot of money. So be sure that this fits your use case, and I hope this review is helping for you, that it fits your focal length, sampling, and what you desire to get out of a camera, because like I said, that's a lot of money. You can find out more in the link in the description below though. I'm really quite smitten with this camera actually. I've really enjoyed using it. I've loved the photos that it's produced. And because of the APS-C size sensor, if you're coming from a DSLR and you're looking for your first Astro camera and you're gonna spend a lot of money on it, then this is very familiar. Of course, the difference is it hasn't got built-in screen, but just the, the field of view is awfully familiar when you're coming from a DSLR. And I believe because of this reason, it actually bridges that gap quite nicely. And yes, admittedly, there's no getting away that it's an expensive camera. It's over £500 more than most of Zwo's really popular cameras like the 183, 533 and the 294. So is it worth it? One reason for this price is that APS-C size sensor. Not only is it just bigger to manufacture, but they'll get less sensors, good sensors, off of each platter that they make. So they have to charge more for this. And because of its sensitivity, and due to the other features of this camera, let down some by some other areas, I believe that it's actually good value for money. But yeah, it is a lot of money. The biggest downside was the sense of frosting. And yeah, you could probably dry the desiccant caps out. But honestly, I just found photographing at minus five degrees C to be the easiest and most straightforward workaround, which still produced very nice images. And you know what? I already anticipate people asking me, oh, 71 MC Pro versus 2600 MC Pro. The 2600 being the new camera, more expensive. I think it's 16 bit as well. Here's the truth of it. I have not used a 2600 MC Pro, so I can't weigh in on that conversation on paper. Yeah, it's one thing, but use case is another one. I'll try and get hold of a 2600. And that's it. Thank you very much for watching, everybody. If this review has been helpful, then give me a thumbs up. But if, if it could have been better, then you know what to do. And consider subscribing for more reviews such as this. Now, are you going from a DSLR looking for your first dedicated astronomy camera and does that familiar FOV seem appealing to you? Or do you just want a bigger sensor? Let me know in the comments down below. And with that, thank you very much for watching. I hope you have clear skies. Keep looking up. Keep them cameras clicking. I'll see you later.